Hey, everybody, before we start this uh, phenomenal, phenomenal episode of the Wadcast podcast, I want to talk to you about a whole bunch of things. Uh, first off, I want to thank you guys for listening to the shows, um, bearing with the show, with me, during all these changes. Uh, one of the biggest changes is um, not only that Scott and Armin and Kenny and there's, this has changed over time. Uh, and now, uh, I'm running solo with it, which I, I, I miss the guys, but I really enjoy doing it solo because I get to do fun episodes like this one today where I went off to Dojo Boom, which is a, I don't know, parkour, trampoline park slash ninja warrior course and, um, get to like do these things and, and meet some interesting people that I wouldn't necessarily get to do because organizing a whole bunch of other people is pretty difficult to do. So this allows me to go off and do some uh, solo shit. It's kind of like when Sammy Hagar left Van Halen. Okay, that's a bad example. Anyway, what I did, though, I went to Dojo Boom. Great episode. Really fun. Met with Kevin Kevin Bull, who runs Dojo Boom and is a, a ninja warrior. He's won a bunch of competitions, and uh, you might recognize him from the TV shows. Um, phenomenal guy and phenomenal athlete and brings to he's a crossfitter and he uses crossfit for his sport that he does which i'm uh i'm i'm a big fan of i think that that's you know something we should all be doing and uh it was really fun if you want to check it out i make a lot of videos now uh that's another thing i can do i can shoot videos while i'm there so i made a fun video that you can check out on our instagram page Go to our Instagram page because when we um, all kind of separated, I lost the Instagram page somehow. And so now I have it back. It's Wadcast Podcast. Um, so it's at Wadcast Podcast. And please, if you listen to the show, we know how many people listen, but those people aren't following us on Instagram. So please take a second, go um listen to or uh, follow us on Instagram because it helps us. It helps with advertisers. It helps with everything. Helps um, getting out content to you guys of what we're doing. Uh, if I sound like I have the sniffles, I do. I didn't take my lipospheric vitamin C while I was in Edmonton. And I got to get on a plane tomorrow. I'm headed to Bozeman, Montana to do a show at the Rialto Theater. That's Friday night, April 12th. I'll be at the Rialto Theater in Bozeman. Whole bunch of CrossFitters coming out. Should be a good time. Don't anybody shake my hand because I have a cold. Um, I'm going with Troy Willis from Myopux and also a um, uh, guy that is organizing it has been doing an amazing, amazing job. Um, there's a, a bunch of CrossFitters reached out to me uh, and Troy and said, hey, why don't you come up to Bozeman, do a show? So we're doing that. Um, uh, so Steve Rast is taking care of that. And I'm hopefully going to see a bunch of people from a whole bunch of uh, CrossFit gyms. So uh, that's that's you know kind of why I did this show. This is uh, I get to go hang out, work out, go skiing with um, some buddies, all guys with similar interests, and um, do a show, which was what I do. Maybe do some podcasting. Who knows? But I'm off next week for Easter. I'm taking a week off. It's the first time in a long, long time. And then I come back and I head the 22nd to Las Vegas, 22nd through the 28th. I'll be in Las Vegas at Brad Garrett's comedy club at the MGM grand. That's a beautiful, beautiful club. Uh, if you're in Las Vegas, it's one of the nicest, um, if not nicest comedy club. Um, and I'm headlining there. So come out and check me out the week after that. I'll be in St. Louis at the funny bone. That's the second through fifth of May. And the week after that, I go straight from St. Louis back to Las Vegas to play the Comedy Cellar, which um, it's a little different. I headline the MGM Grand, but at the Comedy Cellar, I'm, I do what's called a showcase show. The Comedy Cellar in New York City, which is a premier comedy club in all of um, New York, open a location in Las Vegas, and they just take a whole bunch of comics from the New York location and have them perform in Las Vegas at their club in the Rio. It's pretty cool because... You see like 15 to 20 minutes of each guy. So there's a whole bunch of us and it's better for that short attention span. So uh, check that out. And then uh, June, 
uh, I'm just going to give you June dates, not July. It's July. I'm having a baby. My wife is pregnant. We're having a little boy. And um, I'll be back at the Comedy Cellar in June um, in Las Vegas. Oh, I forgot. No, June. Wait. No, that's May. June. Yeah, I'm in the Comedy Cellar the 3rd through the 9th. And then I will be in Atlanta at the Punchline in Atlanta, June 13th to 16th. And then I am going to, I believe I'm going to Skankfest, Skankfest in um, New York City, uh, the 21st, 22nd, 23rd. And then I'll be in um, Yonkers, New York on the 26th of June, the 20, oh, I forgot the 23rd. I'll be in Stone Harbor, New Jersey. That's it. 23rd of June. I'll be in Stone Harbor, New Jersey. 28th, I think I'm in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. Uh, New Jersey, somewhere on the 29th. I don't know. Go to eddieif.com. All the dates will be posted there. If you want to come out and see me, get your tickets. Send me a note. Let me know you're coming. Sometimes I can hook you up with free tickets. Sometimes I can't. Uh, it all depends. The way comedy works. A lot of times I'm on a guarantee where they just pay me a set rate. Sometimes they want to pack the club. Sometimes it's uh, I'm on a percentage, on a door deal. I got to sell tickets. Sometimes they only give me a certain number of comps because they're paying me a certain amount. But I like to take care of CrossFitters. So um, check that out. Um, go to, uh, again, we always give away a uh, um, a Myopux and a, uh, we, we give away a Myopux and Leopard Claw every week. I'm holding off on that this week because Troy, uh, Myopux is taking me up to Bozeman and I don't want to bug them. And so this week, sorry, but you give $5.00. You get in the chance to get a Myopux every single week. I give one away. And if you've gotten one, uh, let us know. Let us know how it's working for you. Uh, the Leopard Claw, same thing. Uh, Leopard Claw is a, you know, scrapes all that gunk. I call it gunk. And the Myopux flushes it out. So if you want to get one of those, just donate to our Patreon. $5 a month gets you one. And uh, possibly, possibly, you know, we pick a new one every week. And, um, uh, the, um, you know what? I feel like a dick. I feel like I need to pick one. Give Troy some work to do. Um, should I do one? I think I should do one. Let's see. Let's go through here and we will pick one up. There you go. Aaron Schnetzler. How about that? Aaron Schnetzler. You just got yourself a Myopux. And a leopard claw. So I went back on what I said. I don't know. I don't, I'm feeling charitable. I also feel like if I don't give one out every week, I'm a dick. So there, you got one. Aaron, you got a, for $5, your donation, you got yourself a Myopux and a leopard claw. So congratulations, Aaron Schnetzler. Um, yeah, but seriously, write to me. Let me know, um, uh, what you, uh, um, you know, if you're enjoying these things, because I, I love it. Uh, it's funny. I'm packing right now for, for Bozeman. I'm going skiing at Big Sky. And I'm like, geez, I got to take my Theragun. I got to take my uh, my Myopux because I'm fucking sore from today. I did uh, did some little party tricks with um, Kevin Bull, who is uh, our guest today. Um I hope you enjoy this episode. Always go to wadcastpodcast.com. You can join up for Thrive Market or uh, U.S. Grassland Beef, I believe, wholeheartedly in both those companies. Uh, we just got an order from Thrive today. Uh, and uh, I'm going to get my bacon from U.S. Wellness when I get back. Oh, also, today's episode is brought to you by Kettlebell Kitchen. Uh, kettlebellkitchen.com. Use the code WADCAST to get $25 off your first two orders, $50 or more. So uh, check that out. And also uh, my new favorite clothing brand, High Elite. I'm taking a couple of High Elite items with me to Bozeman to wear uh, because they're just warm and functional and perfect. So check them out at highleet.com. You're going to get 20% off if you put in WAD20. So um, check those out and uh, keep listening, keep supporting, keep reviewing. I just got a nice note. From someone, um, I should mention it. Uh, 
they wrote me it in a, in a, I think it was in an Instagram message. It was really nice because, um, it was to my personal Instagram and it was just a nice message telling me they enjoy the show. And I appreciate when you guys write me these nice messages. So, um, you know, I guess I'm not as big a dick as I come off as, um, when the other guys run the show, but I had to play the heel, you know, somebody had to do it. So, um, enjoy this episode. I, uh, uh, I, I had a good time and, uh, hope you like it too. Um, there was so much again that I talked to with Kevin before we or after the episode that I was like, why didn't we record that? He talked about a flash pump in the forearm and how he was actually saying they use their guns to um, warm up their arms before, because they don't get to warm up before they do the show, which is really weird to me. Um, but the stuff this guy can do is phenomenal. You gotta, you gotta check out what he's doing. Also send me guests. If you think somebody should be a guest on the show next week, I've got Hunter McIntyre on the show. We're talking about his bid, how he's trolling the CrossFit world. They want to kill him. All the competitors that have qualified for the games are like, how dare you? How dare you try to get yourself into the games without qualifying in the open or the sanctionals? So I think it'd be really funny to get Hunter in the games. So do Hunter a favor, use the hashtag, get Hunter to the games, get Hunter to the games. And also check out huntermcintyre.com. He's got a petition. He's trying to get CrossFit to um, give him a chance because he's performed well in other sports similar to CrossFit that he thinks he deserves a bid for CrossFit. I don't give a shit uh, either way. I mean, I don't really have a, a dog in this fight, but I would like to see everyone get really pissed off. So I would like to see Hunter get in it. I like Hunter. Do I think he deserves it? I'm not going to comment on that. But we're going to have him on next week with Crazy Bobby. Uh, I know you'll love that episode. Monday night, those two are coming over to my house. We're going to cook out and shoot the shit. So that's probably going to be a long one and a fun one. So get yourself some beers, sit down and uh, beers or protein shakes and listen to uh, the Crazy Bobby and um, Big Hunter, as my daughter calls them. Uh Yeah, that episode, um, that will probably go out next week around Wednesday sometime. And uh, yeah, check Hunter out and help him out. And uh, if you're ever in the Southern California area, Thousand Oaks, check out Dojo Boom. It's a cool, fun place. And I hope you enjoy this this, uh, interview. Welcome to the Wadcast Podcast. I'm your host, Eddie Ift. I am here at one of my favorite places in the world. And I I say I'm a superlative guy, and I say a lot of best, greatest, this is everything. But if you look at my my Instagram feed, you'll see I'm here quite often. I'm at Dojo Boom uh, right now. My guest, Kevin Bull, not only the owner of Dojo Boom, uh, a a ripped motherfucker, and also a... um, former champion of American Ninja Warrior. Um, How many champions have there been? Well, on American Ninja Warrior, we would say we had only one true champion, which was Isaac Caldero in season seven. I have won a couple episodes, though. Okay, so So he's the only one that's completed the entire thing with the fastest time. Wow. So I have watched a bunch of your, I guess, wins. or I I love when they called you a... um, uh, there was an episode where they said you were a walk-on. Yep, that's right. It, and was that in Venice Beach? Yeah, I walked on in Venice Beach, which was an awesome experience. Camped out there for four days. Did not, you really? Not the best camping experience of my life. I used to live half a block off of uh, off of the boardwalk for no, ten cool. years, and I I saw the first year they built the rig. Nice. And I went, what What the hell are they doing? And I walked over and I saw these guys jumping around and swinging on things. And it was probably my first year into CrossFit. So I was like, hey, I could do this. And then I went, no, no, I can't. No, I can't do any of this. This is crazy. This is insane. They can't be making a TV show. Yeah, it's a little different for sure. Um, I think a lot of people are surprised when they first start doing Ninja. Um, Well, so you camped out for four days. That's right. Because... They had had people that they wanted in the show? Yeah, so everybody that wants to get on the show, 
should go through the casting process, which okay. is you put together a video and you send it into casting. They watch thousands of videos and then pick a few. Um, so I didn't get selected in that, uh, but I felt confident about doing the course. I thought it was something that was really worth uh, doing. So I found some other guys who were going to walk on and I went in and joined them and walked on. What was your background? I mean, I, I know you're a former pole vaulter and right. uh, track and field, but what, there's, there's more to this. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Of course. Well, track and field does make the biggest part of my athletic background. Um, I did track and field through, uh, every year of high school and college. And, um, uh, it was a great experience. You Where, know, where'd you a, go to college? Uh, I went to a few different colleges. I graduated at the end from CSU Stanislaus, my last two okay. competitive years, but I did two years in junior college of com- competition, one redshirt year, and one semester at Arizona State, too. So you were pretty <laughs> serious about track. I was. Um, I tried to walk on to the Arizona State team mm-hmm. and wasn't taken, and as a result, I left Arizona State so that I could continue to compete. What was your pole vault? How high? Uh, my best one, I was just shy of 16. It was 15, 11, and three quarters. That's pretty high. Yeah, it was. Uh, takes a little while to get back down once you're up there. And you did decathlon? <laughs> I did the decathlon too. Uh, that was my main focus in college, um, was training for the decathlon, but the pole vault had been my main focus in high school, and I ended up doing both. And then also the 4 by 4 relay when uh, I was in college. Brutal. I have a little, <laughs> little bit. I ran track in college myself, but... Uh, uh, tried the decathlon, mm-hmm. tried because they looked at me and went, "You're not going to be great. Do something that you can be good at everything." And wasn't good at that either. But, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I just, I, 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 it's, it's very similar to CrossFit. People don't understand decathlon like how much yeah. you guys actually have to train. And your training, so it's what I enjoyed about it uh, so much more than the other sports. I always liked doing as many different types as I could. I didn't really want to focus all my time on just one thing. I like training a broad skill set, and that's what drew me to decathlon. And that's also what CrossFit is about. It's yeah. You have a broad skill set that you work across. It's funny, though, because I was, a, I was a hurdler, and I felt like I didn't have enough hurdle training. <laughs> and then I would watch the decathletes come over and train with us. And then I would see them with the throwers, with the jumpers. And I'm like, how do these guys go to school? How do they have a life? How do they, Yeah, it was, it was really a lot. I mean, just insane. It's interesting, but you gotta, you gotta play a different game when you're training for a multi-sport, which is instead of trying to just, you know, perfect everything, you're like, I have a certain amount of time. You have to budget. <laughs> I can do as much as I can on this in this amount of time. And then I got to go to the next thing. Most important question. Have you compared all your decathlon scores to Caitlyn Jenner's? <laughs> I have not compared the scores directly. No, but as a, um, as a decathlete, you know, uh, that's somebody who, who comes to mind quite often, yeah. uh, when you're training as somebody that you, that you look to for their past performances. Right. 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 So who are the best decathletes? Uh, there's a guy out right now. That's pretty good. Um, I think he just retired though. Um, yeah, well, um, I think I heard a rumor and I actually didn't follow up to find out if this is correct, but I heard Ashton Eaton's yeah, Ashton. record was recently broken, but, oh, really? um, so I'm not hundred percent sure on that, right. but I got to meet Ashton, Ashton Eaton actually, cause he tried, uh, the celebrity version of Ninja a couple of, <laughs> a couple of years ago. Uh, so I got to train him to do a Ninja course, which was a lot of fun. It was cool to meet, uh, who definitely at that time and, uh, was the best decathlete the world had ever seen. Yeah, so he's, he's it's fantastic. So how much money did you win when you, uh, when you won a couple episodes of, uh, Ninja Warrior? Well, there's not a lot of prize money in Ninja Warrior unless you win the whole season. Sounds like um, CrossFit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you really got to do the whole thing. Um, and like I said, we've only ever had one person do that. There's a million dollar grand prize if you win an entire season, so but they kind of dangle that million and only one guy's gotten it. Yeah, somewhat. Um, it's a great challenge, is, and that's kind of the point of the whole thing, yeah. right? Um, it's not a challenge that people complete every year, yeah. um, but we do know it's possible. Like, we get out there, and we look at it, and we say, this is really hard. Yeah. Um, we've trained for it all year, and we're not 100% sure that we can get to the end of this course, but we do think it is possible. And uh, fortunately, we had at least one season where we were shown that it was possible. What's his name again? Uh, Isaac Caldero. Are you friends with Isaac? Uh, somewhat, yeah. Okay. I'm friends with most of the ninjas. Um, I love that. through the competitions. <laughs> the ninjas. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we get to do special events sometime uh, where we get called out and we'll get to hang out with ninjas outside of the show, which is cool. 
Um, Isaac and I, I met him actually in one of my very first competitions. We went to a backyard competition together and, um, he, uh, his ability to not pump out was something that showed when you say pump out in your forearms. Yeah. Like the forearms, finger strength and things. Uh That's really where he shines. Um, he won't win like the speed courses early on in the season, but then, uh, those final couple stages, he's the most likely or has been the most likely in the past to go through them. Right. Um, because that's the thing that usually gets us out as athletes. We get tired. Any individual obstacle that we see on the course, we can usually do if we're fresh. But um, once you've done a series of like six of them, that seventh, you're not going to be at your best and you're going to make more mistakes. Um, And if you're still feeling pretty fresh, which it looks like Isaac does most of the time, (laughs) you're less likely to make those mistakes. What's his secret? Do you know? Uh, he rock climbs a lot, uh, um, and that's oh, that's oh, a sure. strength he's definitely relied on. But I think you know, uh, at that high level, there's also an element of he's just really built to you know have that endurance. I was just going to ask you that about rock climbing, mm-hmm. um, like someone like Alex Holm, what's his name, Alex Hommel or whatever the guy that just did free solo the mm-hmm. the documentary. Which, if you haven't seen, have you seen the? The doc- I haven't watched that oh documentary go, yet. Go watch it tonight. Okay. Especially Solo. you being who you are. <laughs> yeah. uh, it won the Academy Award. It's about the Very guy cool. who summited uh, El Capitan without ropes. Nice. The yeah. entire way. Oh, that's going to be an awesome one. Um, it's always breathtaking to watch the people who are free it's, soloing. It's, uh, I explained it to somebody. I go, it's like watching somebody commit suicide for an hour and a half. Because <laughs> like, you know any slip. Yeah. He's gone. Yep. And so the whole time you're any movie I've ever watched, I say, I don't like that. Fi- I don't, you get anxiety watching a film, but you know, this is the hero. He can't die. Yeah. Or if he's going to die, it's going to be at the end of the movie. That's the formula. That's how a film works in free solo. You're going, this guy could die at any second, yep. any second. So you're, you're, you're just watching it going. Yeah. Edge of your seat. I don't want to spoil it, but uh, like a guy like that, would American Ninja Warrior be easy for him? Um, parts of it yeah. would be, but parts of it wouldn't. So um, those climbers, they're fantastic at the, the grip, grip strength. Yeah. And they're probably not going to pump out, which is what gets a lot of us out. Right. But when it comes to like balance, explosiveness, some of the obstacles require those things. They're not necessarily going to have that. So, so it is it is a different skill set than climbing. Right. But there's certainly a big part of climbing that we try to take into the course climbing is a big part of our training so with the grip strength and the not pumping out is that are you doing stuff just like a lot of holds and a lot of grip strength stuff yeah so you're working tendons yeah uh mostly um tendons a little bit of cardio helps with that too um i found but and that was the big the big kind of eye-opening moment for me when i started doing ninjas i had done more traditional sports up until that point and suddenly I realized that a tendon could be strengthened and the whole time through college, I'm just building muscle. Right. Right. Um, and that was kind of a, it blew me away. I'm like, well, I got other parts of my body that I'm going to need to strengthen that I've never done before. And that was really cool and really exciting. And it so what kind, it what up kind of stuff did you do to strengthen tendons? Um, well, a uh, couple basics. Like when I first started, I just started doing finger push ups, mm-hmm. which is really easy. And anybody can switch to finger push ups from regular push ups. It doesn't do a lot to improve like dexterity mm-hmm. <laughs> in the fingers, but you build up like a very rigid strength mm-hmm. uh, fairly quickly, which uh, does translate over and helps you get through certain plateaus. Uh, after that, um, more traditional rock climbers, like, um, not just rock climbing, but also the fingerboards they have. They yeah. have these hangboards that go up over the door frame, yeah. and you do sets that don't have to be long sets. It's sets of like, you know, even six or seven seconds, and do like eight of those sets, and um, that strengthens the the crimp fingers, the crimp strength. So let me ask you this: so you're using your flexors in ninja more than anything. How are you not getting tons and tons of tendonitis in your elbows? Uh, at the beginning I did, yeah. uh, but it went away. Really? So yeah. You just so blasted through it. I went through it. Yeah. Uh, a couple tricks that I learned early on is you can do like little half, if you do knee push ups, it kind of loads the muscles the opposite way and it relieves a little bit of that tendonitis. Interesting. But after, after I got the tendons strengthened, I don't really get tendonitis anymore. So, oh but God. yes, early on it was 
frequent and common. Oh, I've just had it so bad. I had it one time my elbow, basically my olecranon, like blasted off my arm, broke. Yeah. And because uh, I've just had so much junk in there. But that's why you use a Myopox, everyone. Uh, we'll get you one of those. Um, uh, I'm just interested in that. I want to see those push-ups after this because uh, sure. I think that's a massive, massive problem in CrossFit, I know, just because so much gripping. Um, mm -hmm. There's so much gripping and there's uh, um, not – if you think about it, like where is their extensor work? Like what yeah. what is there to do? Yep. Um, I buy these little rubber things that uh, – you can extend your fingers. Some a uh, fan. Yeah. I've, if you're out there, whoever sent them to me, uh, thank you very much because it was the the greatest thing I've ever used. Because I haven't had tendonitis since I've been using yeah. them. That's good. Yeah, I've used them before too. On like I keep them in the car. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Long car going. rides, that's and I just exactly it, yeah. start working the fingers. Yeah, um, that's a good thing because I, I I know a lot of people listening do experience that. A lot of people listening are probably wondering why I have such a gravelly voice right now too. Um, I, I always take this like uh, liposomal, uh, lipospheric vitamin C every single day because I travel. I'm on the road every week. Mm -hmm. Airplanes, meeting people after shows, shaking hands. Uh, this week I went to Canada. I got off the plane from Australia, three days off straight to Canada. I forget my lipospheric vitamin C. Oh, and you're on planes. And the plane and shaking hands. And I came back and I'm like, Ugh. yep, that's rough. So I'm, I'm fighting a little thing and I leave tomorrow for Montana. So, um, I, I got home on Monday and my, or Sunday and my daughter looks at me and she goes, dad, you promised to take me to dojo boom. <laughs> so, uh, I was at dojo boom Sunday night. Um, I'm here quite often. I'm probably a once a weeker. Yeah. Well, we love having you come out here. <laughs> It's uh, it's good that it's good to see people that come uh, frequently. Sometimes some people treat this kind of like um, a once, like an amusement park yeah. where you come every once in a while. But um, there's a lot that you can get good at here. We've got a lot of things to practice and rehearse. And I think it's so much better for a kid, especially at a young age, to do this rather than do. I watch her gymnastics class. She has fun, but she comes here and she has a lot of fun, yeah. and she doesn't realize how many different things she's working from. You've got, <laughs> you've got climbing walls, you've got foam pits, you've got trampolines, tons of trampolines. You've got like a Ninja Warrior course. Mm -hmm. You've got, um, you name it, dodgeball. Sure. Uh, there's so much to do here. Well, there's also a different, there's a mental difference between training something like gymnastics and training like Ninja or the kind of things we have here at Dojo Boom. Um, with gymnastics, you have a, you're very rigid in what you need to do, mm -hmm. and it's perfect, right? You'll do a perfect flip or interrupt. a perfect Let double. Me yeah. Did you see the girl that broke both her legs yesterday? I did not see that. No, it's the worst video I've ever seen on the. And internet. this was gymnastics. Gymnastics landing, just a land, not off bars. She does like some kind of you know like roundhouse back, you know back yeah. flip, and lands in just both shins, just like. Worse than that Anderson, Anderson Silva UFC oh, kick. Oh, my gosh. I mean, like, they both just snap in half. Yeah. And I showed it to my wife last night, and she just went, why did you just do that to me? And I was yeah. like, I don't know. Someone did it to me. So I'm sure everybody's... Just passing it on. Everybody's Googling it right now. But go on. I'm sorry. I had to interrupt you because yeah. I thought maybe you saw it. Uh, no, I haven't seen it yet. But that's always a terrifying thing for an athlete, right? You train hard. and But um, with the, the gymnastics, you know, you're training and you know, those routines are rehearsed and they're almost flawless most of the time. Um, but it's different when you're out here and you're training to be adaptable. One of the things about Ninja Warrior is we don't know what the course is going to be before we go compete. We show up and then we see it. So we train this broad You really set of don't things. know at all. Yeah, we really don't know. Like they don't tell us, uh, they try to, and sometimes they'll set it up one way when we get there and then they'll switch it. Wow. So it's different when we actually do it. Um, well, in CrossFit, you really don't know. They have this unknown and unknowable thing yep. that they say, but you pretty much know a lot of the facets, a, 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 a lot of the different, you know, there's going to be barbell lifting, you know, there's going to be kettlebells, yeah. you know, there's going to be bikes rowing, you know, there's going to be some swimming, there's going to be some rope climbing, you know, all these things and you can practice for them. Sure. Is it the same? Or do you get out there every once in a while and you're like, I've never seen anything <laughs> like that. Yeah. Uh, it's. Yeah, a little bit of both. So there's some elements that we can be pretty confident we're going to need, uh, and we do train those. 
but every, they always try to come up with something that's brand new. And it's a little different than something you've done before. And you're like, what is this? Do you get a, couple a, do of you good get a examples. practice at it? So every once in a while, we'll get some kind of a practice. Um, but it's extremely rare. So usually no. Um, one of the ones that was recent that we definitely got no practice <laughs> uh, was a couple of years ago, we had a new obstacle called the wedge which was basically like two plexiglass boards at an angle. And then you were given like a giant Q-tip and you had to, Oh, I saw that. Yeah. And so that was a skill that none of us had practiced or were even prepared for. Um, and basically the bar would spin around while you're up there because it's just kind of wedged into place. And if it spins too much, you fall in. Um, Uh, so yeah, it was, it was new. It was a learning experience for a lot of it. It got me out. (laughs) I've noticed that a lot of the movements though, go back to fundamentals of, kipping there's so much yeah. kipping that goes there's on. a lot of kipping so much kipping yeah that i, I wonder about you guys and your shoulders like <laughs> how do you not all have torn labrums and cause, well like, shoulder injuries are common they are. <laughs> for ninjas for sure i have been pretty pretty good although i did get a shoulder injury this last year um but up until this point i've been i've been good we work the shoulders a lot to try to avoid that the thing that's hardest on the shoulders is the one of the newer obstacles the wing nuts um, so it's like, um, it's, it looks like a wing nut It's shaped like a wing nut and you hold on to that and it's extended off of a bar and then it's on like a swivel and you rock it back and forth I know what you're to build about. up as much momentum as you can. Right. And then you can just launch yourself. My farthest distance I've launched was like 18 and a half feet off of one to catch a cargo net. <laughs> and it was, um, drew Dreschel in the, got the farthest in competition so far. He, got a 20 foot gap. Um, and that is a lot of, a lot of force on the, on the I, shoulders. I was just going to say but when you finally are gripping, um, I we watched, might be doing, we might be doing it a little too hard on those, that particular obstacle. The rest of it though, I think with proper training, you know, you can protect, but your I've shoulders. watched you here. I watched a video of you here swing across one of the foam pits to grab onto the cargo net. Yeah. That's my practice. That was my practice for wing nets. Here. And you went about 18 feet or something. Yeah. That you? was my farthest. When I caught that guy. And I remember when I watched it, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> it's, it's basically you're falling out of the sky and just grabbing something to stop you from falling. I mean, it feels pretty close to flying. You just launch. <laughs> Have you, in, in Free Solo, they get the guy's brain tested, basically. They, jump, <laughs> they send him to get an MRI and his, uh, uh, what's it called? The, um, uh, what's the part of your brain? Starts with an A. That is your like area of fear, and his was not very active. Yeah. Oh, that's and, interesting. And I, makes sense though. I wonder if did they did his training get him to that, or was he born with that? It'd be that's very a good question. Well, one thing that uh, I, I you can affect that with your training for sure, um, and with with climbing and when you're hanging on stuff, it's actually very important that you suppress that fear portion because that surge of adrenaline and like hyperactiveness Mm -hmm. that your body gets when you're afraid, uh, doesn't help you when you're trying to static out something. It's great if you're getting attacked, right? But if you're trying to plan your route through something, it actually drains your energy faster. I've been in a couple situations where, um, I got nervous after I put myself in that situation Mm -hmm. and suddenly like my strength is drained and I'm like, wow, this shouldn't be a problem. But because you know, my heart rate has gone way up, it's now a problem and I'm, I'm running so out of juice. What'd you do to stop that? I uh, got out of that situation as quick as I could. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the situation? Um, I had gone to uh, Zion national park and uh-huh. they have all these cool canyons. Right. Um, and I had spider climbed through a section of Canyon like that, but I was in a spot where it would be really bad to fall. <laughs> it got really narrow, really fast. And there was some water and like jagged rocks at the bottom. And I was pretty high up. Like um, how high? I was like 25 feet up, Uh I think, and it was a pretty bad drop. Plus, it got wider below me, so I couldn't like go down. Didn't you see 128 hours or whatever? (laughs) No, I never wanted to watch that one. It sounds horrible. Don't ever. I watched it. I watched it on a 15-hour plane flight. Oh uh, wow! In on the way to Australia, and I was trapped between two fat people, so I kind (laughs) of know how they felt. Like I was. I, I, I mean, I'm watching the movie and the guy's stuck there with his arm and I'm like, I got you, man. I'm stuck. Too <laughs> I'm right also now. stuck. I'm, I'm about to cut off one of my legs to get out to go to the bathroom. Um, I literally was below two people that were in excess of 300 pounds and wow. they were married. 
They oh. took the window in the aisle. Ooh. Yeah, they were trying to avoid someone going in the middle. Yeah. I actually did that with a friend once, and it worked. But. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people do that, but <laughs> yeah. they shouldn't do it when they weigh 400 pounds. It was a nightmare. It was the worst. This, uh, And I remember the woman yelling at me for – this is way back when you weren't allowed to be on your cell phone. Oh, yeah. And she's like, turn your phone off. Turn your phone off. We're not allowed – oh. and I, I just kept going. Like, I, I always knew that was – yeah, yeah. Just like an urban myth. And I'm like, uh, she's like, turn your phone off. She goes, the phone can't, or she goes, the, the plane can't take off because you're on your phone. And I so badly wanted to go, no, the plane can't take off because you're too fat. And there's too much weight and we're going to have to let go of some of our fuel or you're going to have to get out. I was so mad. I was so mad when I found out they were a couple. Yeah. And I was like, so you guys. You guys put me in this situation. <laughs> I now have to live under you and know what a chilean coal miner felt like when he was trapped <laughs> underground for six six months because uh, yeah but um brutal uh okay so so that fear you suppress that i find mm-hmm. that's it's very common to surfing okay yeah. Uh, i surf a lot you get held underwater mm-hmm. if you go into fight or flight you lose all your oxygen yeah exactly immediately. and so it's a really tough thing to play that mental game of to say Calm down. Do relax, relax. It's it's almost like as soon as you start wiping out, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what the hold down is going to be like, and you have to go relax, relax. Just take write this. it out. Now yeah. I interrupt the show all the time, and uh, I know some people hate it, some people like it. I don't care. I have to. I got to talk to you about my my new uh, survival method of eating, which is uh, kettlebell kitchen. It's um, it's a meal delivery. And you know, it's kettlebell. It's got the word kettlebell in it. You know what it means. It means that these are CrossFitters. These are people that are into functional fitness. These are people that care about their health. These are people that are feeding you well, lots of protein, lots of good fats, trying to beef you up, make you stronger, faster, leaner, whatever it is. This is good, good, healthy food. And um, they believe in fueling your body with high quality, nutrient dense foods that are going to help you perform your best. So, I'm telling you, if you're looking to lose weight, build muscle, or if you just want to be an all-around killer in CrossFit and get some PRs, Kettlebell Kitchen is here to help it make it happen. Their meals are designed by nutritionists, um, they're prepared by chefs, and they're conveniently delivered. So you can spend more time in the gym and less time in the kitchen. Anybody who cooks healthy food knows it takes forever. No restaurants will give you quality food. They always skimp on the on the ingredients and they cook with oils that you don't know what's really in it and they just care about their margins not kettlebell kitchen they're going to bring you healthy food you're going to cook it you know what's in it you're getting it and some of the stuff is absolutely amazing i just had the bison beef sliders uh my wife used to be a vegan she loves bison now how funny is that my daughter had the paleo chicken nuggets i shouldn't say my daughter because i stole Um, probably about 85% of them off her plate. And she was upset with me because they are so good. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to kettlebellkitchen.com. That's kettlebellkitchen.com. Kettlebell kitchen. You should know how to spell kettlebell. If you're in CrossFit, don't just put KB kettlebellkitchen.com. Use the code WODCAST, W-O-D-C-A-S-T. And you're going to get $25 off your first two orders of $50 or more. How about that? Your first two orders, $25 off. You can't beat that deal. Try it out. Tell me how much you love it. Thank me. That's what I always listen to me. I sound like a narcissist. Thank me for giving you an amazing product. No, I hope this makes you a better person all around and you enjoy it and you eat it all up. And uh, because I know I will be. So uh, check them out. Kettlebellkitchen.com. Again, $25 off your first two orders of $50 or more. Put in WODCAST code during checkout. Are you looking for new, cool, functional clothing for CrossFit? Are you sick of wearing those other companies that I can't name stuff because they're involved in all the controversy and whatever goes on in CrossFit? Look, more and more people are moving to wearing functional clothing, stuff that like looks good, you can wear to the gym, and the company that I see is doing that best is Hylete, H-Y-L-E-T-E, Hylete. They make shoes, backpacks, 
apparel. Everything's got like cool designs, reasonable prices. You're not going to find them in retail stores, okay? And that's why it's cheap because it's direct order. You're going to go. They got a men's line that is uh, all about performance. They got seven styles of shorts. They got women's. They got the, the tights, the Nimbus tight collection. You're going to want to try that. Uh, tights are so popular with women. And go check theirs out. They're incredible. I've been uh, perusing their page. No, I haven't. I haven't. But my wife loves them. And uh, they've got an offer for you. They've got an offer. Go to um, highleet.com and use the code WAD20. That's W-O-D-20. WAD20. You're going to get an additional 20% off. Okay? So you're going to create a highleet.com account. To apply the code first you got to do that so uh so apply the code and then you're going to receive uh 20 off pricing on your first purchase at highly so make a big purchase because you're going to love all this stuff and you're going to want to get 20 percent off and i'm not kidding you're going to want to get shorts you're going to get the, the best long sleeve shirt there is it's incredible in fact highly please send me another one i love those um so get 20 percent off if this is exclusive, okay, exclusive to Wadcast listeners. 20% off wad 20 highleapcom Check out, okay? Do it now. Back to the show. In when you go into like a Ninja Warrior course, you're like people watch it on TV, especially CrossFitters, and they go, oh, I can do that or I can do that. <laughs> but they don't realize because I come to your gym how high up you are. Mm-hmm. And it's terrifying. Yeah, well, I think – that kind of height is exciting to me. Um, so I feel like a little bit extra excitement when I go on like the full scale ninja course, because you're like, wow, this is cool. I'm doing this, but now like I'm up high, um, which feels better. Like it's, it's more fun for me to do the salmon ladder up there than when I'm like, right, right where the ground is. But, um, it definitely is uh, added part of it. And that whole, that vibe that comes in from doing the actual show when you've got like the lights and there's a crowd set up and, you know, most of our training we do like in backyards mm-hmm. and it's not like that at all. Um, most of my training before the show, I used to train out in the woods by myself. There was really <laughs> no crowd. It was just, I lived in the woods and <laughs> that was my training. Where are you from? Are you from this area? Uh, originally I'm from Northern California near okay. Santa Cruz. Okay. So Santa Cruz mountains. But now you, yeah. but now I live down here. How'd you end up here? Uh, well, uh, so Circus Tricks is the company that um, built Dojo Boom. Okay. And they have built a number of trampoline parks and bought others. And um, I got involved with them my very first year of Ninja. They started bringing me out to do small events at the parks. And then they um, signed a full endorsement deal with me a couple of years later. So I was the face of their marketing, still am in a lot of ways. Um, and then after a couple, of, like a year and a half of that, they offered me a position running one of their parks that was opening up and I negotiated to come down to Southern California because it's a great place and ended up here at Dojo Boom. Oh, that's amazing. I, that's a cool story. Uh, what, and I, I, it's, it's a sad thing to say, but I, uh, if people knew where we are right now, we are, um, uh, you're right near, not the Woolsey fire, but the, uh, which fire was right here? Um, well, really both, both yeah. of the fires were. Yeah, the Woolsey was on one side. Yeah. And then the other and one. the Hillfire. Hillfire was, was on the other side. The other side. I came out that night. I drove from my house to check out the Hillfire. Um, yeah. Because I wasn't worried about the Woolsey fire. Mm-hmm. And I checked out the Hillfire and I'm like, ah, I went home and told my wife, I'm like, we don't have to worry. That's, <laughs> it's out near Dojo Boom. It's fine. <laughs> we're not going to burn. Yeah. And. I saw the Woolsey fire on the way. I saw it at the corner of my eye and I was like, well, maybe we have to worry about that one. Mm-hmm. And so I drove to kind of find it. Yeah. And then I drove home. Ah, we're going to be fine. And then the next morning at 5 a.m., my wife's like, we're being evacuated. Yeah. Get great. out of the house. So that was, that was a crazy time with all those evacuations so and you, stuff. You and, had that and you had the shooting yep. two nights before that yep. or a night before that. It was the night before the, the beginning of the fires. Yeah. So, so uh, not to drum up any bad news but uh about a night before the fire started in malibu um there was a shooting mass shooting at a bar practically across the street from here yeah just about a block away yeah so and uh was it called the borderline bar borderline yep and 
you know, just some psycho went in there and just started shooting it up. Yeah. And it didn't get much news coverage because the fire started. Yeah, so it started to, and then the fires kind of came in, and it yeah. was like this big double whammy for the whole area, which was, you know, tough for everybody. Yeah. Um, I know it was real tough for my staff here. It was a, a bar that some of them like to frequent, yeah. and some were there at the time of the shooting. Really? Um, and fortunately all of my staff were safe, Okay, but it was, you know, a tough some, experience to go uh, through. Trauma to deal with later in life. I mean, that's PTSD. I can't imagine that. Um, cause I, I it, it was so quick that that went away cause they were like, Oh, the fire. Yeah. And now everything's on fire. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a, it was a weird, weird, weird time. I, I was, uh, you know, I live right up in the mountains over in, uh, Malibu Canyon and just watched the whole thing kind of unfold with all the fires yeah. and stayed. And <laughs> well, I mean, you could, you get up on the roof and look around and you got fires in one hillside and fires on the other hillside and it's just smoke everywhere. I, I, I guess you weren't worried this place was going to break. It's too much of a cement block. There's a pretty big cement block around yeah, Dojo Boom. Yeah. So I was feeling pretty good that Dojo Boom was okay. But you know, a lot of the, a lot of people were evacuating. My house was drawn into a tiny corner of an evacuation zone, oh, really? but I didn't, it was pretty far off. Um, I did not evacuate. Oh uh, yeah, I, I, all the alpha males stayed. <laughs> well, it's easy to do it when you're in like the very farthest corner of the zone, and you're like, okay. The it's only probably person gray I knew that evacuated was Hunter McIntyre. Mm-hmm. Hunter evacuated, and then well, a, Malibu got hit real a hard. More alpha male named Laird Hamilton made him go back <laughs> oh. and fight the fire. <laughs> well, Hunter claims he fought the fire, but his roommate, who's an artist, uh-huh. stayed. And literally fought back the fire with wow. like hoses and everything. And then Hunter like came and stomped on some bushes that were still smoldering. But he claims he. <laughs> okay. He I'll claimed. take your word for it. I haven't Kev- heard the story. Kevin knows Hunter very well. Hunter's the one that yeah. introduced me to Kevin because Hunter comes over here. Does he train when he comes here or does he just run He around? has trained a couple of times here. So he comes out and he likes to get on the ninja course and we work on a few things together usually. Um, yeah, Hunter and I have done, we met doing, uh, the Spartan ultimate team challenge, which was a TV show yep. that was produced by the same producers of American Ninja Warrior and went for two seasons and we had a ninja team both seasons. So that was fun. So you um, were on the same team with him? No, he oh. was on, he had a different team. Okay. So he, uh, and he only did the first season of that show. He did not come back and do the second one. I believe I think I, was that the one where he coached a team? Yeah. He, he came in as the team captain. Okay. Yeah. I remember yeah. that. Is that what you did also? No, I came in, uh, they assigned a regular Spartan racer to captain the ninjas. Oh, oh the ninjas <laughs> had their own team. Yep. Did you guys crush it? Um, we did well in some of the things. So, like, we, um, we do really well on the obstacles. The running, not so much compared to the Spartans. And then some of the really large obstacles, there were some really heavy ones. And the second we kind of hit a wall on the second season where uh, we got to this. It was, you had to lift an 800 pound telephone pole and in the mud. Yeah. And it was like, I was the biggest guy I think on the team. (laughs) So there was a moment where I was holding the 800 pound telephone pole by myself and like everybody else was trying to like reorganize. And I'm sitting there in the mud, like with my feet slipping and I'm like, I might drop an 800 pound telephone pole on myself right now. Like oh. I was not sure I could hold it. Oh. Um, definitely. The what do you weigh? Thing I, What's your, uh, I weigh about 155. You look bigger cause it, you got a lot of muscle on oh, you. Well, thank you. But you're, <laughs> and you're how tall about? I'm five nine. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So I was the tallest on the team and <laughs> wow. So, so would you say, are you okay? So in CrossFit, you've got the right height and sure. maybe, it's good in a ninja too. Forty to fifty pounds of muscle. Yeah, that's what the top crossfitters are coming. Oh yeah, in at add now. that at yeah. about five, anywhere five eight to five nine, five ten, at a uh, hundred ninety five, two hundred pounds. Yeah, some are even a little bit bigger. And uh, it's tough. I it's mean, tough to get there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But think about what you'd lose. Yeah. Oh, totally. I wouldn't make. I wouldn't make the trade. CrossFit's great, though. I love doing CrossFit. Um, do I go, tried competing a little bit before I did Ninja because I was um, in between doing track and field, and I loved competing, and I didn't know what else to do. But I like working out in CrossFit. Uh, Were but, you doing it in Santa Cruz? I was. Yeah. That's the headquarters. That's the. Uh, yeah. No, it's great location to be doing CrossFit. So, There's a lot of great athletes out there. So 
Um, so what's your training now? I'd love to know what you do for like a day of training. <laughs> so, uh, optimum training for me is I like to do two days a week, two or three days a week of climbing, two or three days a week of CrossFit or circuit, um, one day of parkour, and then try to get a run in at some point during the week. That would be optimum. I posted me. a video of what I think is parkour. Okay. I, cool. I took your, <laughs> your video that you, where you're like climbing across the walls and nice um, <laughs> doing a million muscle ups and all kinds of weird stuff. But I think that's parkour. So, so when you do CrossFit, would you go to a CrossFit gym or do you just work out? Uh, I do like to go to CrossFit gym. Sometimes I'll put together a workout myself or pull one from online. Which, um, which gym do you, do you work at around here? Around here, I go to CrossFit TO. Okay, uh, Thousand Oaks. So it's oh, right on yeah, Thousand yeah, yeah. Oaks Boulevard here. Close, just a couple blocks yeah, from my, where we are right now. My buddy goes there. Yeah. yeah, it's a fun place. So we've uh, I've enjoyed training with them, and they've been awesome. I've posted a few videos of uh, stuff. I end up doing like ninja challenges sometimes <laughs> when I'm in the CrossFit gym, and there are good sports about it. So I'm sure there's workouts that come up every once in a while that are in your wheelhouse that everybody's like, oh, I wonder who's going to win this yet. They are, yeah. If it's like a lot of running and body weight stuff, I usually do pretty good. Yeah. Um, but then every once in a while there's a workout where they're like, all right, you got to snatch 205. And I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so what could you snatch? Um, I think, I think my best when I was doing a lot of CrossFit, I think, I think I got the snatch up to 195. That's not I think, bad. I think I got a that's 195 not bad at snatch. That's not bad at all. That's more than Hunter. It was, it was <laughs> tough and it, I don't like to do the snatch much because I'm actually more afraid of hurting my shoulders doing that than I am doing the ninja stuff. That's hilarious. Yeah. Do you do the handstand push-ups though? No problem. Yeah. I actually, some workouts will modify it to use no wall and I'll make myself do the handstand push-ups without the wall. It slows me down a lot because I do fall over sometimes, but, um, I can get through them. You walk on your hands well though? Yes. Yeah, I do. I think my record was like 65 yards. Okay. Can't stand walk. Yeah. They're getting freakishly good at it. Yeah. Freakishly <laughs> good at it in CrossFit. Like climbing up stairs, back down stairs. Now, going up the stairs is pretty tough. I haven't, I haven't gotten good at that yet. That's, that's a tough one. It's funny because um, uh, when CrossFit started, everybody had really poor gymnastic skills. Yeah. And very good weightlifting skills. Everybody had good weightlifting or could run decently. Mm-hmm. And now everybody's gotten really good at gymnastics and they still, um, there's still a couple little things. I mean, I'm amazed at these guys, how big they are, how much, how well they can run. Yeah. Like, you know, like some of these guys can run a five minute mile. No problem He's with awesome. carrying that kind of muscle. Um, that's very impressive. Um, I wonder though, if they're, they're climbing you being like a, you know, mm-hmm. that's your specialty. Do you look at them and go, Oh, come on guys. Uh, for climbing somewhat, uh, it's, it's rare, um, to get a CrossFitter that's ready to climb because all that is muscle and endurance and it's not tendon, right? And the tendons are usually what you're relying on in climbing so that you don't pump out super fast. I did not know that at all. Yeah. I, I, I just figured it was just muscle endurance and I have shitty forearms. I was like, ah, that's it. I just have no strength in my forearms. They say going into old age, it's one of the indicators, um, like interesting of your grip strength. Yeah. It's a really good indicator of, um, how you're going to age. Really? So, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I know there's a, I mean, there's the, there's old man strength, right? Which is all in the grip. We used to call it burnout strength. <laughs> burnout strength. In high yeah. school, like the kid who didn't play any sports, Yeah, but yet he could like pick up a carburetor and like, you know, bend it in half. And you're like, yep. and you're like how the did kid's he do that? never worked out a yep. day in his life, but he had burnout strength. Yeah, it's like tendons and muscle fibers, like the number of muscle fibers, I guess, that you're able to fire with your mind Okay, plays a role into that, which has, I just watched a special on strongmen and they were talking about that. But um, Have you ever done I, any strongman stuff? I have not. Um, it I'm probably a would bit, be good for you. I mean, it'd be cool to do. All of this stuff is good to practice and train. Um, I don't think I would be terribly successful at strongman competitions. No, but it's good. The um, uh, Down in Venice where we used to do the show, Deuce, it's a CrossFit gym. Deuce, they do a lot of strongman stuff with like the yokes cool. and the, the, the cement balls and everything and uh, sandbags. And I think it's a, a really good aspect of training that can just, I mean, even, even with you guys, it could maybe not because there's just so much like flying in the air and, <laughs> and climbing. But 
I don't know. I, I don't think it could hurt anyone. Um, I know a lot of CrossFitters have had to add that to their repertoire because. Cool. Well, I have a friend I train with here uh, in town called Ben Udi, and he's going to be on the show this year. Mm-hmm. Um, he, uh, he does some of the strongman competitions. And oh, I think really? This last year he went to, he did a competition in Russia. He went for some, it was like, a, it wasn't quite arm wrestling, but it was similar That's and hilarious. it was, he flew all the way to Russia to do it, which is interesting. So but, what, what are you out of doing, uh, Ninja Warrior or do you still, are you able to? No, I'm compete? still doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, my training is difficult to juggle with running an operation as large as Dojo Boom. Um, so that's my challenge for the last couple of years is trying to get the l- amount of training. I used to train like all the time for it because it was, I had time to do that. But, right. um, but I'm still competing right. and uh, I try to maximize my training time as best I can. Do you guys have <laughs> competitions outside of Ninja Warrior? Uh, we do. Okay. We do. We absolutely do. There's uh, competition leagues that have popped up. Before I was opening Dojo Boom, I was running one of them, actually. So I did like a, I had six gyms that worked with me, and we would run competitions in Northern and, and Central California. Most important question. Is this yeah. like, is this getting you laid? I mean, is this like, <laughs> do you go to like Ninja Warrior, and there's like women on the, like, oh my God, I love the way <laughs> he just grabbed that. Um, Not... <laughs> Ninja Warrior is, it's kind of a guy heavy sport. There are definitely women who yeah. participate, but they're very much outnumbered. It's getting, like, as the years go on, it's gotten better. But the More, early years was just like all guys. So and, I remember yeah. my track meets being like in high school, there were like 20 people in the stands. Mm-hmm. When I went to college, there were five. Yeah. Is it kind of <laughs> like that? Uh, no, fortunately, Ninja is a lot more enjoyable for people to watch than track and field. So but I, I made a mistake, you know, I love track and field. It's a great sport, but without spectators, the length of time you can spend doing your sport is greatly reduced. Oh, I know. So, I know. Fortunately, I Ninja is a sport people like to watch. I was and, like, why am I doing this? There's no one yeah, here. No one where, cares. Where's the glory? <laughs> but, but Ninja Warriors become one of the most popular TV shows yeah. In America, so I would think, I mean, CrossFit tried to go that route and mm-hmm. get on ESPN and become, and it did become massively popular in yeah. people wanting to, you know, work out in CrossFit. Ninja Warrior, everybody likes that show. My wife sure. watches it. My daughter watches it. My, I like to watch it. Everyone I know enjoys watching it. It's exciting. Yeah. It's fun. Um, I've often said, excuse me, CrossFit needs to bring more of that. To cross sure. that, like make it more exciting and dangerous and interesting. And mm-hmm. they are, they're getting better at it. But, well, you got to have that moment, right? In sports, you have to have those like moments of superb excitement yeah. to get the crowd involved. And a lot of the team sports have it. You know, you got baseball, a lot of time you're just sitting around waiting for something to happen, but then there's a play, right? Yeah. And uh, football, you know, things are going back and forth, but then suddenly there's a big play that happens and, and there's a big but Nin- movement. Ninja Warrior was created as a TV show first. Yeah. Before it was, it was like, I don't know how much there was a sport even before that. Uh, I mean, there wasn't really. And I remember as a kid, I, I love the concept of obstacle courses. And I was thinking yeah. like, why isn't there yeah. an obstacle course, real, like a real sport that you could do about this? And there wasn't at the time. Well, do you remember but, Battle of the Network Stars? I don't. It's an old TV show. I think they tried to redo it just last year. I know they filmed at Pepperdine. I don't know if it ever made it to the air. But it was a very, very popular show. And they did it with athletes sometimes, like famous athletes. And they had obstacle courses and it was, you know, like a Saturday morning show, like after the cartoons. And it was awesome watching that these does, guys have that to does climb sound awesome. over stuff and come down under. And I was at the same thing. I was like, how, how is this not on regularly? It's so much fun. And I have to say the obstacle course part of CrossFit, of the CrossFit games is the most exciting part to watch. Right. Yeah. So I've said it about Ninja. I'm like, there's more money. In Ninja Warrior, a million dollar prize. Yeah, sure. Only one guy gets it. Uh, it's not easy to get, but it's there. CrossFit Games doesn't have that much money. And uh, it's not as fun to watch. Yeah. Well, I think you got to make it fun to watch in order for the money to be there for a sport, any sport. Yeah. Right. It's got to be, this, it comes from the spectators, it comes from the fans. So, um, yeah, but the, uh, I think CrossFit and track and field, what, those two struggle with is just 
the fact it like it's a great workout and if you're the one doing it like you're into it because you're into the grind right but the grind isn't what you want to watch so you've got to have something that puts that grind to use that is also enjoyable to watch right yeah because the person watching doesn't experience it the way the person doing it does i love that you guys have these like backyard competitions i i I watch (laughs) a lot of you guys on who's um What's his name? The the real real life ninja. Yeah, Drew Dreschel, real oh, life ninja. Okay, so, so, he's uh, he's got his own set of gyms uh, okay. for train. Then his own training program that he runs at those gyms, and uh, he's he's very active. So he's one of the top guys has been for his entire career, and he's been there in the show since close to the beginning. And uh, yeah, he's been dominant, especially in the last few years. Yeah, but I watched one, and and funny enough, I'm friends with Matt Iceman. Because mm-hmm. uh, Matt's a stand-up comedian, yeah, and the host of I got to see one of his stand-up routines once. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, he's a great dude. We actually just played the same town as I did like a week ago. But um, uh, I was watching a clip of your show and my daughter, and you were doing some kind of trapeze kind of swing, where you swing from one to the other, and you uh-huh. decided to rather than use your arms to swing from one to the other you caught it with your legs yeah yeah that was my rookie year so that's uh kind of what put me on the map uh it was an obstacle called cannonball alley and it was it was you're right they were hanging kind of like trapeze bars do but it was three circular rock climbing holds just like hanging by wire uh, and each one was progressively bigger. The last one was close oh, yeah, to were, basketball oh, size. Oh, yeah, they yeah. were balls. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it like, brutal. Yeah, you just had to reach your hand over. And that was a new one that no one had trained for. Uh, there's plenty of rock climbers there, but, you know, there was no one that had trained on those, like, hanging grips before. And now it's a commonplace thing that all most ninjas own a pair of grips that they hang up wherever to practice. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, it was the first year of it. And I think it was 18 people that had gotten to it and been eliminated on it before i decided to do it different and use my feet because uh it was just a bigger surface and really hard to hold on to and people were slipping off and and you made it through that one didn't you or you I felt did. Bit, oh yeah is that the one where you then jumped to the cargo net and like landed at the bottom uh that yeah that was earlier in the run but yes i'm, I'm like one of those guys that's talking to a football player and you <laughs> made that tackle remember in the third period <laughs> yeah. when, when uh, the guy was coming around the end I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I know guys that play football and they're always That's like, funny. guys come up to me in bars and they're like, remember when you were playing Cleveland and you guys were down <laughs> like, seven? I yeah, I have tackled and, somebody before, yeah, yeah. maybe. So I, I'm sorry to be doing that to <laughs> you. Okay. Um, okay, so you have a million cool party tricks that you can do. <laughs> What's the coolest thing you can do out here in Dojo Boom? Um, the coolest party trick or the coolest thing out here in Dojo Boom? Like, like the coolest thing that you can do that like – Someone would go, oh, my God, I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> um, well, I think one of them we talked about earlier was the 18-foot distance uh, mm-hmm. off the uh, – I think they can see that on YouTube. Yeah, I'll, you I'll see try that to on post YouTube. it. It's pretty amazing. Well, on Instagram. Um, but, yeah, that's a pretty fun one because it's an awesome What's distance. your Instagram? Uh, at Kevin the Bull with underscores instead of spaces. Okay. And uh, there's a few other things in here that's great. Our super tramps are a lot of fun. It's not really ninja right. per se. But um, our super tramps allow you to connect a lot of really cool flips and tricks into this routine that you set up on. The I know tramps. a lot of snowboarders and skiers uh, use those super tramps mm-hmm. um, to practice, and uh, they're basically what is that? Is, it, is that an Olympic trampoline or what? Yeah, it's an Olympic trampoline or a Euro style trampoline. But we've built walls around it, uh-huh. so you're utilizing the wall. So you're running up the wall, you're bouncing, and you're building height and momentum, and then you throw flips out of it. You can transfer to the other wall. Do so cool running, wall running, things. running up the wall, yeah. you can actually get higher? Yeah, you can go, <laughs> I mean, you can go really high. Um, but, like, the walls only go so high, so we can regularly get up to the top of them and come above the top of the wall. Um, and it, it gives you a lot of time. You can, you, when you do a backflip off there, you really have some time to think about it on the way down. <laughs> so how many... If you wanted to flip into the foam pit then, mm-hmm. how many flips could you do? Um, I have done three. I've done okay. a triple um, into foam pit. I wouldn't want to try to land that no. without a foam pit. But, yeah, I've done I three. tried uh, the other night. I tried something. Every once in a while when my daughter's playing, I'm like, watch daddy. Watch daddy. <laughs> and I can do this like, it's, I don't know what it is, but you, you t- spin around and then backflip. 
So oh, nice. I think I broke some rules. Um, Possibly. Yeah. Oh, so you, you did a double. You did a, a misty into a backflip. I, I, it's not a gainer because you, yeah. <laughs> you, you're jumping, then you turn and backflip out of it. But somehow, That's a cool move. That actually looks really cool when you do it. So I, that's I used awesome. to do it on diving boards all the time. But somehow I like got my toe under me and oh, it felt no. like I broke my toe. And I was like, yeah. and my daughter who's four is like, what's wrong, daddy? And I'm like, nothing. 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 It's fine. Yep. I'm going to walk it off. I was like, I hope Dojo Boom has some good insurance. <laughs> Just going to get them. Um, how do you guys, how much is your insurance policy for this place? Um, well, I don't think I can go into the specifics. It's not that bad <laughs> really? um, because the injury rates are actually fairly low. Are like, they really? Compared to sport, sports, yeah. We have a lot of people that come through, but like per person, injuries are not very common. Wow, that's amazing. Um, that's good to know, and I think people should know that because um, I would think that's the common perception is like, oh, that's great and that's fun, but – you know. Yeah, uh, there is there is a common perception about that that's out there, and it's you know perpetuated sometimes. <laughs> but um, really, the uh, you know most people will stay within their own understanding of what they can do. Yeah, um, and yeah. there are some surprises when you're on a trampoline, but we have basic rules to reduce the the kind of accidents that would happen. Do you ever have a night where you with, just the like, most dangerous thing with trampolines usually is when people are trying to double bounce somebody else. Yeah. Which happens a lot in backyard trampoline yeah. setups. <laughs> <laughs> um and we don't allow that here. So no double bouncing, no gainers. Yeah, that's right. And uh you also have age limits on a few things because I do. I taught my daughter to lie. And uh <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I think you have to be five to jump off the um off the, the uh, stunt pad. Yeah, yeah that's right. Like, is he is he you're five and she won't lie. She's like the girl's like, how old are you? She's like, I'm four. <laughs> no, is well, he? no. Good for her. Good for her. On her birthday, her fourth birthday party we had here, she was wearing a shirt that said, like, it's my birthday. I'm four. And yeah. I'm like, come on, jump off the ground. And she shows up. The girl's like, how old are you? And she's like, uh, and the girl goes, you're four. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the purpose of those? Having the crash mats. They're fun. Uh, oh, the uh, the big stunt fall? Yeah. Oh, well, that's the purpose is that it's fun, really. Um, but it has, uh, we got a couple different layers that you can jump off of, so a higher one and a lower one. Um, the stunt, the, the pad you're talking about is a stunt fall pad for, like, stunt work and could handle, like, a multi-story fall, but you're only going, like, a fraction of that distance. Oh, really? Um, it could handle a big, big, yeah, big one? it can. Okay. Uh, so it's a big-time airbag, um, but it's a lot of fun, so you get to... Jump off a high dive, basically, but onto an airbag. So what do you do on that? Um, I do flips. Um, I don't allow them for other people, but I like yeah. to do gainers off of it. It's I mean, do you fun. close this down and you and your buddies just go nuts in here? I do go off hours sometimes. I do some off hour stuff. Uh, but a lot of the time, um, I'll bring the ninjas in like yeah. once a week and we'll do a training session. Oh my so God, we've got a group of ninja that. guys around here that uh, are all training for the show. And we get together to go to a climbing gym or dojo boom. Um, and it's a lot of fun. So, so I think we're planning on doing, um, we're planning on doing Monday nights going forward. So Monday evenings, we usually start around 8 PM. I'd love to see Hunter come try to work out with you guys. Yeah. You know, Hunter, he's good. Like he doesn't have all of the ninja awareness yet, but you know, he just uses raw power to get through a lot it's, of things. And he has, power, it's, it's- He's an idiot. He's an idiot. <laughs> He's got a lot of power. He's I've an- seen him. I've seen him muscle through things that you're supposed to use tendons on. <laughs> um, yeah, he's 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 pretty phenomenal. He's he's making a bid right now. I'm posting the video. He's really really the thing I've seen him work hardest on is getting into the CrossFit Games. They're giving out a few wild cards. Nice. And I'm trying to get all the Wadcast listeners to please support Hunter's bid to getting in the CrossFit Games. I've never seen a guy work so hard at not working at the thing that will get him in. <laughs> like all these guys are working all year to get into the CrossFit Games by doing CrossFit. Yeah. Hunter is working so hard at, <laughs> at PRing himself uh, like a public relations scam to get himself <laughs> into the CrossFit Games, that it is worth supporting him for this wild card effort and hope that he gets crushed in the games. <laughs> well, so, Hunter's going to get my votes. So. Yeah, so if you can, um, write to tweet. I, I think it's called hashtag get Hunter to the games. 
Um, just start messaging as much as you can and tag CrossFit on there and whoever, because we real I really think that he will make the games really amusing in that first round till he gets kicked out. Um, <laughs> so let's let's watch him bash everyone. Um, I had one other question for you about um, people's. Uh, there's a, a, a another thing with like uh, foam pits and everything. People always say MRSA or infections or whatever. Okay. Have you ever heard that? I have heard that. Uh, we disinfect them though. We use, I watched uh, them clean yeah. the shit out of this place the other night because we were here late. And I was like, oh my god, that's so good. They clean yeah, this place. We clean nightly. So, so what about the foam pits? You clean those? We do clean those. Yeah. How? Um, well, you can spray them with uh-huh. the disinfectant, um, and then quarterly we empty the whole thing out and okay. do a deep clean. When you empty it out, how much shit do you find in there? Uh, we find a lot of hair ties. Uh, we find a lot of pieces of foam. We find a few phones. I was going to say phones. <laughs> yeah, when I was so. here, my buddy's Apple Watch came off. <laughs> yeah, that's And he had, he had just gotten it, and he's like, I lost my Apple Watch at my daughter's birthday party. And uh, so he's like digging through it, and I go, give up. And he's like, I'm like, just have it's fun. It's an Apple Watch. You yeah. can't, you can't like, give up on it. Go by, and he's, he's looking, looking. And then uh, I guess he used his phone to like make it beep. Yeah. And found it. Yep. So that's a pretty- good strategy. I've gotten pretty good. I've dropped my phone into it there a few times. I've always been able to find it. And usually I can find it pretty quick now. But um, <laughs> yeah, phone pits are interesting. You got to, the, the key is to go in and on your initial search, dislodge as few of the blocks as you can. <laughs> Just kind of reach down and see where something would have fallen. And that's probably where it's gone. Is there a secret to climbing out of foam pits? Uh, it's more like swimming than climbing. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you got to kind of, and if you can get your body on top of the foam and roll, that's the easiest. Yeah, that's what my daughter does. Because um, I, I was in there one day and I was like exhausted and I'm trying to climb out. And I thought this would be a good like workout for or like an event for CrossFit because climbing through the foam pits is you, you're using muscles that you didn't. It's just such an awkward motion and you have to recruit so many different muscle fibers to climb. Like if you had like a swimming pool full of foam pits and you were like, or a foam pit swimming pool and you're like, okay, one end to the other, like just race (laughs) to the other end. How I I really think that'd be a fun workout. Sure. I mean, that is uh, we've done that in some ninja comps that we've hosted before at different trampoline parks is one of the obstacles will be, all right, you got to get through the foam to the other side. Did, Um, did Did you consider doing broken skull challenge? I did. Um, unfortunately, I'm restricted from doing um, other reality competition shows. So, Why is that? Um, it's part of the contract that I signed for to do Ninja. So um, I would love to do Broken Skull or something like right. that, but I'm somewhat limited. Okay. Uh, so, by and, so you have a contract with NBC. Uh, well, everybody does have to sign like a basic document to do, yeah. and that's true for I think any show. Yeah, I, I did one for Last Comic Standing that was about yeah, um, it's very thick, <laughs> twice the size of the Bible. And yeah, I couldn't believe how many things I was initialing that I didn't read. Yeah, I was like, for all I know, they're I've different. I've read all of them. Um, so it, it's time consuming process to you read. You read the contract. I read the contract. Yeah. So did I you know. read your iTunes terms and conditions also? No. Okay. I don't think I don't think there's anyone in the world that's ever read that. Yep. I think uh, the South Park episode was pretty correct. Oh, do they have one? They, have they do. It's a pretty bad episode. Um, well. Um, I don't want to keep you much longer because I know you have a place to run, but um, uh, I'm I'm just amazed by this place. I think it's like the coolest place. I think what you guys do is so cool, and I think it's an aspect of um, of fitness that is amazing. I mean, to be honest, I've been doing CrossFit for ten years. If I could do what you guys, I'd rather do what you can do than be able to stand in a box and lift weights above my head <laughs> because what you do is more exciting. It's more fun. It's uh, I just would never have that ability. Sure. Well, I will say CrossFit is something that I've stuck with for many years uh, as part of my training. And it's, I do like doing Ninja more, but CrossFit is a very important part of me preparing myself to be ready for that. Uh, It is a great workout and it does a great job to prepare you for a variety of things. That's important that you say that because that's one of the things that gets lost in CrossFit that people, there's people that go to the gym and just go to the gym every day. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, you do CrossFit so that you can you can do other things, yeah. play sports, yeah, and absolutely, do these fun, exciting things rather than so you can go skiing, so that you can go to a Ninja Warrior place, so you can go 
play soccer, whatever sport you do, CrossFit should aid that, not your whole life be about. Yeah. CrossFit. I mean, that's, that's my philosophy with a lot of going to the gym. You know, it, it builds you up, you get stronger, and then that opens the door for how many other things you can do. So how do you think you're going to do this year in Ninja Warrior? Uh, I think it's going to be a better year than last year is what I think. Um, you always want to see improvement. Um, you always work towards it. Last year was our first year opening Dojo Boom, and that really took up a ton of my time and effort and things are more organized now that yeah. we've been open for over a year. And, um, so I'm looking forward to this season. So, uh, you say you do CrossFit like three days a week. Ideally. To, okay. And then a, like a ninja workout three days a week. And then what was the other thing you do? Well, it was like climbing and CrossFit yeah. actually more okay. than a quote unquote ninja. Workout. Do you got a climbing gym for that? I do. Okay. Um, and that's because it's the conditioning stuff. Right. Right. Um, when I doing a ninja workout, I'm doing, Usually for skills, um, but there's a certain amount of like muscle endurance that is best to do on a ninja course. So sometimes it'll be endurance runs where I repeat the course a few times. Um, the interesting thing, and this is kind of what puts ninja apart from something like climbing, is you're doing a lot of laches and you're taking a lot of impact on your arms mm -hmm. frequently. Um, and climbing, you're kind of, you're statically moving around. You're using your feet as much as possible to take things off your arms. Uh, but with Ninja, you don't have that ability. So, um, you've got to train your body to be ready to absorb that impact. Your arms drain out really fast when you take your body weight impacting off of a drop or yeah, something like that. I can't imagine. I, I, I hope I never have to do that. <laughs> the only time. <laughs> well, you that. should, you should put yourself in that situation cause it's fun. I'm too but, old for that. <laughs> um, I, uh, do you do any cardio at all other than doing like loops of that? Well, cardio is important. Um, I don't try to mix ninja with cardio much, but I get my cardio from CrossFit mm -hmm. or running. You will go uh, for a run? I will go for runs. Okay. Yeah. I was curious about that. And then what about your nutrition? Do you, do you, are you pretty focused on that? I am probably not someone you should come to ask That's nutrition hilarious. advice. Hilarious. <laughs> you seem like you're probably the kind of guy that like, after you do your ninja shit, you sit down and you like watch Marvel films and eat pizza. And, and uh, <laughs> I probably eat like my diet is close to 50% protein, 50% carbs. <laughs> That's probably what my diet is, Come is on, like. Give me an idea. What is it? Is it in and out burger or is it? Uh, um, occasionally I try, I'm not eating fast food all the time, right. but I'll eat it on occasion for sure. Um, so you're there's normal. a lot of, there's a lot of like microwaved food cause I'm busy <laughs> and yeah, I like the best for me is Costco. Like right. there's a lot you yeah. can get in the freezer section yeah. and then I can make it up real fast yeah. or I'll try to get like the fish or something that cooks really fast or something that goes in the microwave and yeah. Cause you, you're, are you here all day long? I'm here, yeah, mostly, almost every day okay. for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. You're, you're where you love to be, though. And yeah, and it's, a, it's a fantastic facility to it be, is. It's to a, be it's working a, It's in. amazing. So if somebody wanted to, uh, was interested in putting one of these together, who would they talk to? Um, so the company, the company is called Circus Tricks, Circus. and they do franchising as well. Uh -huh. So if somebody wanted to open one, they could uh, contact through the website or shoot me a message and I'll pass it on. Okay. And, uh, and they can watch you. And as you said, you're at Kevin, the bull underscore underscore. Yep. Instead that's of right. spaces on Twitter and Instagram and on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'll post some stuff on our page. Um, look for them. Hopefully we're going to see you in this, uh, this up. What, what season are they on? Uh, this is season 11. We're going into starting at the end of May. Wow. Yeah. Season 11. Wow. Season 11. Um, and I wonder if there's any other CrossFitters out there that are, there's, I'm, I'm sure there's probably a couple guys that have tried out that have looked at it and been like, oh, I can do this shit. <laughs> no, you can't. Sure. Um, well, I think there's, uh, there are some, there are some ninjas who do CrossFit on a regular basis. So, yeah, but, uh, they're not, I'm, I'm talking top level CrossFitters that think, uh, to they, transfer they, over. They can do some well, Hey, they should come on out and give it a try. I think, <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on all your success. Thank you for being part of the show. Um, if you guys uh, come out and see me, wait, this isn't going to, well, maybe you can see me if you're in Bozeman, Montana, I'll be at the Rialto theater Friday night. Um, one show only. It does look like it's going to sell out. So maybe they'll add a second show. Um, and then two weeks from now, I'm in Las Vegas at the uh, MGM grand. I'm headlining Brad Garrett's. So uh, come out and see me there. At, I'll be there all week. And then after that, I'm in St. Louis 
And I already talked to some CrossFit gym. I'm going to come out and see you guys and uh, a couple other dates. Chicago's coming up. Zanies. Check out all my dates at edf.com. And uh, Kevin, can't thank you enough. Uh, cool dude. Awesome place. Uh, cool life. Interesting stuff. And I'm so glad to have had you on the show. Well, thank you for having me. It was, it's been a blast. All right. Thanks.